jam-packed crowd tonight for Steve Forbes' team. A 10-0 start in this building as this Wake Forest fan base believing again and a win against their rivals at home would go a long way for restoring this fan base's faith in the program. And Duke trying to bounce back after they lost to Miami over the weekend, dropped their national ranking from two to eight as they try and restore their winning streak. And gonna be tough to do it in a place again where Wake Forest is 10-0 at home to start the season. Yeah, they've been really good at home. You take a look at the numbers right there, completely different team uh, at home. I think the big thing, uh, speaking with Coach John Shire yesterday, you know, he said, look, defending the three-point line, obviously that's going to be key, but I think uh, turnovers, that was a problem for them. Obviously, uh, we've detailed and documented the long layoff Duke has had two weeks off. Uh, they have to take care of the ball and this game on the road. Duke in blue, Wake in white. They got Mark Williams to jump at the crowd. I'll let him know it. Our officials, Roger Ayers, Lee Cassell, and A.J. Desai, as we are underway in meeting number 256 between these ACC rivals. Duke making a change to their starting lineup tonight. They've gone with the same five all season until tonight. A.J. Griffin in the starting lineup for the first time in his career. Inside, Ben Carroll muscles his way in to open the score. Take a look at the Wake Forest starting five. Malcolm, what's the recipe for a Demon Deacons win tonight? Well, a couple of things. Defensively, uh, they must keep Duke out of the paint. You see early on, Duke trying to establish the paint. Remember, in their loss versus Miami, uh, that was an advantage uh, for Miami, mainly because of the turnovers, and then also Duke had some problems containing dribble drives. Again, that's going to be key for Wake Forest. Can they keep Duke out of the paint and force them in to jumpers? Here's Griffin. First touch is a starter in a Duke uniform in place of Jeremy Roach tonight. Heels on the drive. Scoop to the hoop falls. Duke up 4 0. Well, you can see early on the strategy. Duke is being patient offensively, and then they are not settling for jumpers. Uh, they are trying to work the ball around and then trying to get into the paint. Excellent strategy early on. A little too aggressive. Paolo Bancaro called with his first foul. prolific offenses, not just to the ACC, but the country. And prior to the pause, they were playing as good as anybody. Uh, when we spoke with Coach K, uh, prior to the Miami game, look, he was concerned. Uh, again, he's never, in his 40 years of coaching, had to stop midseason like Duke had uh, for two weeks. Uh, certainly, uh, they have looked rusty since they come back. First bucket of the game belongs to Dallas Walton for Wake Forest, transfer out of Colorado. Both of these teams could score. We were just talking about the Duke offense. Wake Forest, one of the best scoring teams in the ACC. Griffin hits the three. A.J. Griffin in his first career start, paying dividends early. He provides, I think, a versatility for them. He can guard multiple positions, uh, but that right there, he has shot the ball really well in his last four games. And... Duke perfect from the field to start this game three for three. Van Carroll has the size advantage and uses it. Van Carroll asserting itself down low early. That's where he becomes a matchup nightmare. You put a smaller player on him, and he's just going to try to back him down to get into the post. Williams the answer. He's the go-to guy, second in the ACC in scoring. He leads this Wake Forest team in points, rebounds, and assists. Jay, he might be the best transfer portal pickup, uh, not just in ACC, but in college basketball. Uh, he is doing a little bit of everything for this Wake Forest team. Feed inside, Williams, first miss of the night for Duke. Lon 
as Williams backing down the kick out out of control. First turnover for Wake, and Duke will get the ball back, leading by five. Well, when we first talked to Coach K about this young guy's game, a guy that's going to be playing at the next level, he said, look, he is so difficult to match up with because of that right there. And then Williams on the other side uh, spoke with Coach Shire. He said, look, uh, that's going to be the matchup. That's going to be the key matchup for us tonight. Uh, can we keep him under control, not only with his scoring, but keep him out of the paint to set up his teammates? Bancaro's feasted in the paint early. The hesitation off the window and in. He's a perfect three for three to start the game. It's interesting to know this is Duke's first road game since the loss to Ohio State 43 days ago. You see us off the mark. Tracked down by Alondas Williams. Great feed inside. Couldn't control it. Dallas Walton. Jump ball the call. And the Blue Devils looking for a road win, a bounce back win. It's certainly a strong start. Up seven, 11 to four. Revival tonight at Winston Salem and it's heyday like in 2004 when it was Chris Paul playing Duke. The gold and black tie-dye shirts you see them all over the crowd. It really serves as a symbol of the success the Demon Deacons were having under Skip Prosser in the early 2000s, but has faded away for really more than a decade. But Steve Forbes has done such a great job breathing the life back into this fan base. And wouldn't you know, tie-dye nation is back tonight and been loud and proud early and I think Malcolm is symbol that Wake Forest basketball is back under Steve Forbes. And they're struggling against the number eight team in the country early down 11-4. Yeah and on to that point though we spoke with him last night he said look winning <laughs> you know I'd love to tell you uh, I'm doing something uh, special but they're 10 and 0 at home and he knows uh, at the end of the day uh, that's what's going to bring folks back winning and being exciting to play or uh, watch them play and that has been the formula for them early on uh, they've won uh, but more importantly uh, they've been really fun to watch uh, in particular the points per game which you touched on earlier uh, they can score the ball really well you say winning, but you make it sound so easy. How has he won? This is only year two in a program that really struggled before he got here. Well, I think the transfer portal. Uh, we talked about it right off the top. Williams uh, really has been a huge pickup for them. You look at it, he leads the ACC in assists, but he also can score for himself as well, too. It starts there. You have to hit uh, on the transfer portal. And we have the Miami game. Uh, you look at Charlie Moore for Miami. Again, when you hit like that on the transfer uh, portal, you're going to have some success. Crafty play underneath the hoop. Jake Ravia went behind the back off the O. John to win possession for Wake Forest. Down eight, five minutes into this first half. Struggling from the field, two of six. In a scoring draft that's gone more than four minutes. Nice to see Davian Williamson bring the ball up for Wake Forest. He's missed the last two games for the Demon Deacons in COVID protocol. One-on-one <laughs> -on -one with Wendell Moore Jr. And again, an errant pass. That'll be another Wake Forest turnover. Both uh, Williams was trying to do too much in the passing game. We're talking about the success that Steve Forbes is having in year number two. Big reason why winning in this building. 10 and 0 to start the season. They've already got as many ACC wins as he did all of last season. And he was very blunt with us last night. He said, look, I don't want to wait till year three. <laughs> That's not how this thing works. He understands people want to win now. And he's really excited and happy with uh, where his team is right now. Litmus test tonight, facing one of the best teams in the country in Duke. Bancaro's first miss. What a block out by time by C. Foul call against Jeremy Roach, who's into the game after being removed from the starting lineup. 
And Jay, the matchup you want to keep an eye on, Wendell Moore Jr. Uh, versus Alondis Williams. Uh, that's the one, that's the matchup, uh, that's the key one. State. Five seconds to shoot. Swung over to Williams. He has to pull the trigger. He didn't realize it. And that's a shot clock violation. Jay, that's all set up. Wendell Moore Jr. was denying Williams. So again, he disrupted uh, their offense. He's doing a great job early on. He's forced two turnovers against Williams. And then that possession right there denied him. Uh, that really messed up the timing and rhythm of their offensive possession. Well, Wake hasn't scored in more than three minutes and 30 seconds. They've suffered four turnovers during that same stretch. Totally out of rhythm on the offensive end. Really dialed in Duke defense for John Shire's team tonight. Defensive possession that time, and then they get out off the turnover. That'll breathe some life into this jam packed crowd of the Joel. Excellent recovery. We got a little draw now in between, and we knew this was going to be a tough matchup. Seems so familiar with each other, and that's just a great defensive possession uh, by Wake Forest. Jeremy Roach over to Joey Baker who fires a three and was fouled shooting from beyond the arc. So Joey Baker heads to the foul line for three free throws. And Baker coming out aggressive offensively. That time, Arabia coming out. I think he was the guy on the closeout. You have to be there on the catch. He's late, and that's the last thing you want to do on a three-point shooter. Coach tonight for Duke with Mike Krzyzewski out with an illness not related to COVID. We send our best to Coach K. It's funny, Malcolm, you and I had John Shire's game a year ago when he stepped up as the acting head coach in a win against Boston College and now forced into action again tonight in a seat that he will have permanently a year from now. And going back to our conversation uh, with Coach K prior to the Miami game, which we had, he has so much faith, so much confidence in his staff, not just John Shire, but all of his assistants. Uh, so, again, I don't expect them to miss a beat tonight in this game. And certainly gotten a strong defensive effort coming off the loss to Miami. The loss dropped in from number two to number eight in the national rankings. And Blue Devils looking to bounce back. Of course, another turnover. That's the fifth in the last five minutes. Dangerous in transition. Here's Wendell Moore Jr. Has the size advantage. Fading away. Can't knock it down. right now, Jay. No field goals since the 6-14 mark. So they've hit a little bit of a speed bump on the offensive side. Offensive rebound. Second chance for Wake. And they cash in. 
Alondas Williams hits it from three. And just like that, Wake back within four. Williams with seven of the Demon Deacons nine. Five seconds to shoot. Roach has to hurry. Goes up with it. Misfires. Offensive rebound. Theo John with authority. Backing down. He misses it. Here comes Williamson. His triple team did foul. He'll be at the foul line when we come back. Uh, I think the best story coming out of this weight program, you look at his numbers, the scoring, I think the biggest thing, though, is the assist per game, and that's what Steve Forbes talked about. He said, look, I knew he could score it, uh, but he's been really pleased and impressed with how he's been able to set his teammates up leading the ACC in assist per game. And, uh, Jay, you look at some of their offensive numbers. Uh, they're top five in the ACC point per game. They're number two. Third in field goal percentage at 47%. And I think the big number is the assist. Uh, they do a nice job spacing you out offensively. And then uh, they are finding guys and playing unselfish. Duke had a hot start to this game. Started four for four from the floor. One of seven before that. Dunk. Paolo Bancaro hammers it home exactly what the Blue Devils need. Well, he's come out with a mindset to be aggressive, and that's the word that John Shire used when we spoke with them yesterday. He said, look, uh, all of these guys need to come out with the right mindset coming into this game. And, uh, Bancaro has come out aggressive offensively. Fouls. Who's there to scoop and score? Alanis Williams right on cue. His terrific night continues. Nine of the Demon Deacons, 12, and it's back to a one-score game. Great hustle. Cameron Hildreth going up with Trevor Keels, and he forces the turnover. The freshman out of Worthing, England, who crossed the Atlantic to play his freshman season in Winston-Salem. Terrific effort. That was the Bencaro dunk on the previous possession. Powell's having a terrific night as well. Eight of Duke's 15. One of the best players in the country. Yeah. Pull up, pop. It's pure and weight. Back within one. Well, that right there, that's on the big. But you have to do a better job on Williams. Defending ball screens, you got to hedge and either slow him down, but you can't let him get into his jumper that easy from the foul line. Inbound misfires. Wake Forest with an opportunity to take its first lead of the night. There's Wendell Moore Jr. rips down the rebound. Finds the trailer. Ben Carroll inside to Williams. Tough take, no good. The foul, Cameron Hildreth. The spin cycle and the contact, and one opportunity coming for the freshman out of England. Oh, this is just a beautiful individual move. Crossover, then spun him back to the middle, and over Bancaro, and that is a tough floater in the lane. From the south coast of England, top-ranked player in the UK. Can't complete the end one, but he gives Wake Forest its first lead of the night, 16-15. A 10-2 run for the Demon Deacons. Thanks, Thanks, 
Here's Mark Williams trying to get going. Falls off the rim. He's missed two good looks inside for Duke. And you're right, Jamie. Twice now, he's had pretty good position. Two feet in the lane when he's caught the ball. Just unable to finish. That rolls off the rim from Alondis Williams. Duke won for their last 10 in a scoring drought of 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Another steal from Hildred. He's been a spark off the bench tonight. Williams in a three. That misfires. Duke only one made field goal in more than seven minutes of play after they started the night four for four. As Bancaro, who's had the hot hand, tries a three. Up ahead, defense into offense, name of the game, and Wake Forest rolling. Isaiah Musius makes it an eight-nothing run. Well, a couple things, Jay. Right now, Wake Forest doing a great job cleaning up the defensive glass, not giving Duke any second chance opportunities, and then they're getting out in transition off those misses. Paolo Bancaro in attack mode, carrying Duke right now. He has 10 of the Blue Devils, 17. against Mark Williams. Yeah, Wake Forest, a one-point lead against number eight, Duke, and Malcolm Huckabee. It's two guys doing the heavy lifting so far. Yeah, they've been playing great ball. Paulo Bancaro, you look at his last game versus Miami, he had 20 points and seven boards. On the other side, Williams against Syracuse, 25 points, 12 boards. I think the key number I'm going to come back to, four assists. Uh, he's doing a little bit of everything for this Wake Forest team. Both guys playing at a really high level. Duke started this game perfect. Four for four from the field. Since then, just three of 14. Bad offense or good defense, Malcolm? I think it's a little bit of both. Right now, I think the big thing for Duke, don't settle for jumpers. Remember, early on in this game, everything was going for them in the paint. That's the one area you don't want to settle. Not much ball movement, and then a contested step back three. That's not a good offensive possession for Duke. The offensive struggles have allowed the crowd to get back into it, and Wake Forest is taking the lead despite shooting one of seven from three. Williams misfires there. One thing to watch tonight is the turnovers for Duke after a season-high 17 and a loss to Miami, only three so far in the first half. But possessions like that almost feel like a turnover, Hawk. Williams coast to coast, everything but the finish. And Carroll trying to do it himself, and Williams was not expecting the pass. Isaiah Musius working one on one. Nobody can buy a bucket right now. Both teams in scoring droughts of more than two minutes. Foul called off the ball against Cameron Hildreth. Good time to remind you terrific slating college basketball on Saturday a triple header that features Notre Dame and Virginia Tech at six and Georgia Tech and North Carolina at eight all right here on the ACC Network Here's Trevor Keels off the inbounds muscling his way to the hoop no good Baker keeps it in bounds Possession stays alive. Van Carroll on the drive. Blocked. Dallas Walton, the denial. 
And with five minutes left to this first half, Wake Forest a one-point lead against their ACC rival, number eight, Duke. And give it right back to the Blue Devils. Well, Dallas Walton has been really active. This is his great defense right here against arguably of the best or one of the best players in college basketball right now split his feet well and then able to come up with the block that's excellent individual defense by Dallas Walton. A.J. Griffin and and one opportunity coming fires Duke in front and will get one more free throw and he just brings a different dimension nice little curl cut right here great upper body strength that time finishing with the left hand and Good things have happened in this game when they've gotten the ball in the paint, not settled for jumpers. Excellent move that time by A.J. Griffin. This game needed some scoring for two teams that have, on paper, the best two offenses in terms of scoring in the ACC. Both teams is ice cold in this first half. 20 to 18 now. Hildreth working on Keels. Tough take and it goes. What a night for the freshman out of Worthing, England, the south coast of England. Not known for scoring this season before of Wake Forest 20. Already matches the season average. Here's A.J. Griffin, crafty move of freshman on the Blue Devils side, answers immediately. He provides so much versatility on both ends. You see right there, showing off the handle and an ability to finish through contact. That's a beautiful move off a couple of turnovers, excuse me, crossovers. For the lead, rims out, no good. Carroll can do it all. He leads all scorers with 10. Comfortable at the top of the key in the post. Griffin, a deep three. Can't connect. Maybe Williamson with a head of steam rims out. But an opportunity to tie it at the line when we come back. Two of the best scoring teams of the ACC. They've needed some buckets. Low scoring in this first half. Duke leads 22 to 20. Our Wednesday night ACC Network doubleheader continues right after this game goes final. We'll get you to NC State and Louisville coming up 9 Eastern time on ACC Network. Big story tonight, Coach K not on the sidelines with a non-COVID related illness. And we're sending our well wishes to him. John Shire getting an opportunity to sit in the chair. He'll have a, on a permanent basis a year from now. And you look at what Duke is missing tonight on the sidelines and will miss them this season. And you know, the numbers, mind blowing. And uh, Certainly huge shoes to fill for John Shire, but in talking to Coach K. Malkin, he's so confident in Shire, and not just Shire, but the whole staff to continue the Duke legacy. Yeah, absolutely, and Steve Forbes as well, too, as so many coaches uh, have so much respect for Coach K. He said, look, I didn't realize how much he did for the game and how much he's done for the league until you get into some of these league meetings with him. And, and he just said, look, uh, you can tell he cares not only, obviously, for his program, uh, but for the game in general. Almost a Sports Center top 10 play, but Moore has mistimed it a little. David Williamson draws the foul. He's done a really nice job getting into the lane, getting himself to the line. He's already taken four foul shots in this first half. And what's going on right now, Jay? Steve Forbes was adamant. He said, look, we must keep Duke out of the paint and force them in to being a perimeter shooting team. And that has happened early. You look at the numbers right now, Duke, a one of five or 20 percent uh, from the three-point line, and then they are 33 percent from the floor. Uh, 
Wake Forest, credit them. They've done a nice job packing the lane in and then forcing Duke to shoot jumpers. Williamson hits both to give Wake Forest back the lead. Adima Deek is not shooting much better for the three. One of eight, so only one made three for each team to this first half. And then two of the highest scoring teams, not just in the ACC, but the country. <laughs> Step back three, Bancaro buries it. Paolo Bancaro. He's been red hot. 13 of Duke's 25. You got to live with that. I mean, that's a guy uh, that arguably is going to be the first pick in the NBA draft, hitting a big time step back three. Not bad defense uh, that time uh, by Dallas Walton, but that's just a big time player making a play. Well, you take out Van Carroll and Alondis Williams, and these two teams would barely have double digits in this first half. Every Thursday, 10 Eastern time on ACC Network. Nothing but now. You get everything you need to know in ACC women's basketball, 10 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow night and every Thursday, nobody covers the ACC like ACC Network. DJ having the Davion Williamson back in the lineup. For Wake Forest is huge. Not only the double digit scoring, but I think stretching the D. You have to respect his jumper. And, and he's a guy uh, that makes two threes per game. So again, he stretches the floor out and gives you another score. Inside, Trevor Keels missed it. Williamson split the defenders. It'll stay Wake Forest basketball. You mentioned. Davian Williamson coming with Steve Forbes from East Tennessee State. He's number one in the ACC in free throw percentage at 92.5%. And he's gotten a great job getting to the line tonight. He's taken eight attempts, made six. That's the guy you want at the line. And, and he's done a great job getting there. Yeah, and in particular, OJ, make or miss in transition, he has been really aggressive pushing the ball before they can get their defense in. Perfect position for the follow from Flash Hadeem C. Seconds on the timer. Here's A.J. Griffin looking for Williams. There's your answer. Mark Williams ties it at 27. Beautiful offense. That might be their best offensive possession of the first half. Patient and a nice play, unselfish play by A.J. Griffin for the line. Great feed inside. Watch in the slam. This Wake Forest crowd has come to life as a slam dunk contest has opened up at the jaw. Right there, great work on the offensive glass and then A.J. Griffin with the pass to Williams and then a beautiful pass by the assist leader in the ACC. And both teams now start to pick it up on the offensive end. Connected, finished the three-point opportunity. Wake Forest does control the lead, though, by two. Wendell Moore Jr. in attack mode. Only a second attempted shot of the first half. First made bucket. Wendell Moore Jr., Mr. Reliable. Alondas Williams back the other way. Tied at 29. Risky cross-court pass, read by Trevor Keels. Four on two, Keels a three. He's got it! Trevor Keels, who got the steal, buries the three, and Duke is up three. Wait for his timeout, we'll step aside for 30. 
Coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report, you'll have Dallas Cuff and K.J. Smith in the ACC Network Studios looking ahead at NC State in Louisville, which follows this game on the ACC Network doubleheader. And we'll bring an update from Clemson and Notre Dame. Eight seconds left in this first half. It's been back and forth, and an offensive foul called against the Demon Deacons, a shove off. And this will give Duke an opportunity with 7.7 .7 to go to add to this three point lead. John Shire uses his use it or lose it timeout. Coach K not on the sidelines tonight with a non COVID related illness. Opportunity for John Shire to step into the main seat, which he will take over on a permanent basis a year from now. Okay, 7.7 .7 seconds left. A lot of options uh, for John Shire. Plenty of time, uh, no need to rush, but uh, Van Carroll has had the hot hand thus far in the first half, 13 points. Griffin has heated up as late. And obviously, anytime Wendell Moore Jr. has the ball, he's an option as well, too. He's got it now out of the timeout. Passes off. Griffin hits it as the first half buzzer sounds. Duke closes the first half on an 8 0 run. Back to back threes from Trevor Keels and A.J. Griffin to give the Blue Devils a six point halftime lead. That's been a fun first half, back and forth, but Duke edges in front 35 29. With Malcolm Huckabee, Jay Alter with you. It was really a one possession game for a lot of that first half, but an 8 0 Duke run in the final 44 seconds gives the Blue Devils a six point halftime lead. Malcolm and AJ Griffin making his first career start at 11. He was really the go to guy at the end of that first half. Yeah, he was huge to close out the first half for Duke. Uh, you look at his numbers uh, in that first half, 11 points, two of three from the three-point line, and a big three right there off of a patient offensive possession. On the other side, uh, Williams, a uh, four-week for us, uh, one of the better scorers in the ACC. I think, though, Jay, I'm going to go back to the big number for him, his ability to set up his teammates with some easy opportunities. Uh, that has been huge for Wake. Yeah, Williams the good 11 points six rebounds the bad those five turnovers and Duke has cashed in for 10 more points off turnovers than Wake Forest had in that first half and early on it was Paolo Bancaro with 13 for Duke a six point Blue Devils edge two possession lead what does Wake Forest need to do to claw back into this game and take control of it? Well, big thing is the turnovers. You already touched on it. That was an issue Steve Forbes talked about. Look, you cannot turn the ball over against Duke, in particular the live ball turnovers. And then I think they're going to have to go back and try to get either A.J. Griffin or Bancaro, uh, get those guys off their game. Don't let them get going offensively. Continue to try to make these cheap, contested jumpers. Here's A.J. Griffin, and he picks up right where he left off. A strong shooting night in his first career start. He's five of six from the floor and continues Duke's run. It's now a 10-0 stretch in a one-minute span going back to the end of that first half. Mark Williams, the rejection. Duke dialed in on both ends of the floor to start the second half. Up nightmare spin move get the smaller player on my hip and then show off the hops they are right now identifying the matchup they want with Van Carroll and Griffin and they're letting those guys go to work largest lead of the night for Duke Alondis Williams trying to cut into it is fouled on his way to the hole and this is all set up Mark Williams great 
movement and mobility by the big and then great recognition by Duke. Smaller player on Bancaro and he makes them pay. Unselfish play that time by Keels recognizing that Bancaro had the mismatch. Yes, sir. Rims out for Williams. Paolo Bancaro, number two in the ESPN draft prospect rank. He sees that A in physicality, and he has shown it off tonight. Huck. Well, both he, along with Trevor Keels and A.J. Griffin, uh, they are the definition when you look up college-ready body. I mean, those guys are pro-ready bodies. Uh, you really can't. Uh, appreciate how big and physical those guys are. So you're right up on them personally. Griffin and Bancaro combined for 28 of Duke 30. Trevor Keels going inside and muscling his way to the rim. Well, I like Duke right now. They're not running offense. They're just exploiting the matchup. That's just great basketball right there. Again, Trevor Keels clear size advantage uh, over Nuces, and he is just going to work on him. Here's Jake LaRavia, really quiet first half for him, no points. Only played nine minutes because he picked up three fouls, and that's after he played the full 45 in the overtime win against Syracuse, so they're going to need a big second half from LaRavia. He's cashing in off another turnover. Mark Williams on a rack attack. Largest lead of the night for the Blue Devils. 13. And Duke rolling in Winston-Salem right now. All Blue Devils. Whatever is the strength of their offense at the time, and you look at the numbers right here, uh, Duke, oh, one of the top offensive teams. Uh, not just in the ACC, but in college basketball because they have so many guys that can score in different ways. Exactly. I mean, for many times it's been Bancaro that's been the mismanager. A.J. Griffin, offensive foul is the call. Duke dialed in on both ends of the floor, and it's worth remembering that this Blue Devils program, just a week removed from coming off the COVID stop that shut down the program for the better part of two weeks and talking with Coach K, he said it was going to take time to get back to the level that they were at before the stop, and we have certainly seen flashes of that during this 16-1 to run. Well, I think the mindset. Uh, you can see Van Carroll was locked in early in this game. And back to that previous play, him stepping in, giving up his body to take a charge. Jay, those are winning plays. Uh, those are plays, uh, when you add them up at the end of the game, that's a possession uh, for your team, and you can tell uh, they got the message coming into this one on the road. Right back inside to Trevor Keels, using that size of six foot four, 220. That is huge for a guard, and it is paying dividends right now. Wake Forest needs to stop the bleeding. They go to Alondis Williams, rejected by Mark Williams. Here's Van Carroll finding Griffin. Five of six shooting tonight for the freshman, making his first career start. Here's Paolo Van Carroll. You know it's coming. You still can't stop it. Van Carroll, 17. I mean, Jay, right now, it's just pro style. Isolate, get the matchup you want, and let your guy go one-on-one. -on -one. And that's just smart basketball. Again, they have a clear advantage uh, with their guys, and they are not settling uh, for contested jumpers. They're being patient, and then they're finding the matchups that they want. They have started a perfect six of six from the field in the second half. After they closed the first half going four for four, they've made ten in a row, and Williams right now just feasting inside. That is his second block of the night. John Shire calls him the X Factor. And coming off a game against Miami, he has six blocks. He has been big for Duke protecting the paint tonight. Jump ball between 
Griffin in the Ravia. Scoring drought of two minutes and 33 seconds for Wake. They are in the danger zone. What was such a close game, back and forth for the first half. Steve Forbes' team has let this one get away, down 17. Need to start chipping away. Nadim C rattles in and out, no good. Tapped around, falls to Trevor Keels. With a burst of speed, Bancaro stuffs it home. Paolo Bancaro and Dukes up 19. Unselfish basketball. Now you can't run your transition any better than that right there. And the finish uh, by Bankero, all set up uh, by an unselfish pass. Much needed jumper from Alondis Williams. Stops the bleeding temporarily, but Wake Forest needs a stop. Bankero, step back three. He's got it! Paolo Bankero putting on a show. Duke is eight for eight out of the gates of this second half. Bancaro has 22. Alondis Williams, the much needed answer. Count it plus the foul, but right now, it's Paolo Bancaro's world. A human highlight reel. And one of the first names you'll hear in the NBA draft in April. One of the best players in the nation, Hawk, and he has shown why tonight. That he's had the whole game and the whole package going tonight. He's shown you his versatility right here, out in transition, end of break, and very few holes in his game. Uh, he's a guy that can post up a smaller player. If you put a bigger player on him, he's shown off the handle. Again, he is just a guy that has a matchup nightmare, and he has gotten it done tonight. A perfect four for four from the field to start this second half, and he's been a microcosm for really the entire Duke team. That has been on fire. Couldn't play much better offensively than Duke at the end of the first half. We saw some glimpses, ended on an eight-nothing run. Now they have come out of this second half and just been perfect. Eight for eight from the field. Keels takes it inside. How about it? No basket. Wave it off. Foul on the floor. Keels wanted it, though, and you can't blame him. Right here, nice little jab, and just getting into the paint, showing off that upper body strength. Here's A.J. Griffin, step back three, so pure. One of the best shooters in the country, A.J. Griffin. Six of seven from the floor tonight, and three of four from three. And Jay, you're absolutely right, he came into this game over 40% from the three-point line. Uh, he can do it off the catch and shoot, uh, but where he is most lethal, off a little crossover or step back, he has such a strong lower body, and he's able to elevate over defenders. John Shire told us about A.J. Griffin. He's playing his best basketball of the year. And he noticed that, and Duke gave A.J. Griffin his first start of the season, and boy, has he made them look good. 16 points on 6 of 7 shooting. And as good as he's been offensively, Jay, I think of the area where uh, he can uh, really, really uh, make an impact defensively. Again, he provides a lot of versatility. Take a look at all these guys coming in and uh, both he and Van Carroll tonight, though, got it going offensively, and Duke uh, wisely exploited the matchups and allowed those two guys to go to work. And AJ, the son of Adrian Griffin, who is a great player in his own right at Seton Hall in the NBA. 
played against his father you know, four years. His dad, a great defender, now an assistant coach with the Raptors. And future very bright for that young man right there. What are the similarities between father and son hockey? Well, his dad could defend. I'm going to give his dad a little edge defensively. Uh, but offensively, this kid's got it all. Going to work this time inside through contact. We're going to tag Mark Williams with the foul. Aggressive on the glass. That is the fourth foul against Mark Williams. One more, and he's done for the night. He comes out of the game. And a little small ball with Bancaro at the five. And Forrest leads the two bigs in. Counted plus the foul. No. Wave off the basket. Foul called against Dallas Walton. And Wake Forrest just can't get anything going. Steve Forbes hoping, looking for anything in this second half that has been all due. And Jay, this is where it's going to start for Wake Forest. Oh, they're going to have to get some stops. Baker a three. Rattles in and out, no good. And that rolls in. He leads the Demon Deacons with 19. Malcolm, your key for the game was don't turn the ball over for Duke. After a season high 17 in the loss to Miami, only three turnovers tonight. Bancaro pull up pop. Rims out. Dallas Walton misfires. For the Duke basketball. They thought it was off the of Blue Devil last. Good time to remind you a terrific triple header for you Saturday on ACC Network and the ESPN app. It starts at four. The two games we're featuring, Notre Dame and Virginia Tech at six and the Georgia Tech and North Carolina at eight. A monster triple header right here on the ACC Network on Saturday. Make four is trailing by 16. They led with a minute left. In the first half, since then it has been all Duke. Williams, the spin cycle, gets that to go at the rim. Alondas Williams with 21. He's trying to will Wake Forest back into this game. And a timeout taken by John Shire. Mike Krzyzewski out tonight with a non-COVID-related illness. And you know, John Shire will... Sooner than later, take over for Coach K and sit in that hot seat permanently. And I'll tell you what, if recruiting is any indication, you look at those guys that are coming in next year, the John Shire era will be off to a terrific start. And I think the key thing, you touched on it, Jay, all those guys know that uh, they are playing for John Shire and not Coach K. And I would say things are getting off to a really good start in that department. It helps when you can step in as an acting head coach and win like you did a year ago against Boston College. Now looking to improve to 2 and 0. 14-point lead. And a really good look from Lucius. Those are the ones you need to knock down that come from behind. Seconds to shoot, try to loft it inside the bank. Carroll, miscommunication between Theo John and Jeremy Roach, and that's 
a turnover. First one of the second half, only the fourth of the game. And that's good team defense that time by Wade Duke, trying to go to the matchup of Van Carroll, got switched off onto a guard. Moravia takes it inside. Count it plus the foul. Jake Moravia got Van Carroll in the air. His first bucket of the game comes at a great time. Great patience. Nice head fake and then a good body control. Eyes on the rim the entire time and able to finish through contact. That's a big bucket for Wake Forest. And again, Moravia's first made basket of the night completes the three-point play. He played all 45 minutes of the overtime win against Syracuse, only played nine in the first half after he picked up three fouls. And after that three-point play, it's a 9-0 run for the Demon Deacons. A.J. Griffin trying to silent this crowd. Spin move. He's fouled, but we'll get two at the line. Well, everything but the finish. And Duke up until that point, you touched on it. They were on a four-minute scoring drought. Back to the previous possession for Wake. Jay, I think they need more of that. Obviously, if a three comes off, a dribble drive, that's fine. And same with Duke as well, too. I felt in their last possessions, that four-minute stretch, uh, they got into that mode of settling for jumpers. has the size advantage, but he's fouled. Wake is kind of taking a play out of Duke's playbook. You know, they were working the size advantages, the one-on-one -on -one matchup when Duke went on their run, and now Steve Forbes' team looking for the mismatches on the offensive end. And LaRavia, a guy that's been efficient all season long, close to 60% from the floor, uh, second in the ACC. Coming up right after us on the ACC Network, doubleheader. The nightcap is NC State and Louisville. Doubleheader Wednesdays on the ACC Network. We've had a good one here. Joel Coliseum, largest and loudest crowd of the night with number eight Duke in town. Coming into the day, Wake Forest 10-0 at home. A lot of momentum, but Duke almost had a huge slam there. They've done a nice job sucking the life out of this crowd in this second half. Griffin almost another must-see moment there. He'll get two at the line. Right now, for the game, Duke only eight free throws. Eight, eight, four, yeah. Shooting under 50% from the line now, Malcolm. Missed opportunities, and certainly as Awake trying to fall back into this one, uh, free throws certainly will be key for Duke. Duke still a 12-point lead, but the door has been slightly cracked in the last five minutes. Duke no made field goals. Alondis Williams denied at the rim. All the way up ahead to Keels. And that's a goal that should count the basket. And Jay, what a play by Wendell Moore that time. Heads up play, throw it down, and yeah, that's clearly yep. a goal 10. And he's the veteran. I think he's the guy 
late game situations that has to get uh, this team settled and in position. Moore picks the pocket of Williams. Tried to go up with it himself, but swiped away. It'll stay Duke basketball underneath their own hoop. Been a quiet night for Wendell Moore Jr. Just one of three from the field, only three points. Uh, but he's impacted the game in other ways. In particular, right there. Assist on point, out of the out of bounds underneath, and then defensively, uh, he has drawn the assignment. And you see inside to answer. Bancaro slam. He now has 24 human highlight reel. And he's not done with nine minutes left to this one. Bancaro calling for it. Instead, they give it to Griffin. There's AJ Griffin. Going to work by Jeremy Roach. He draws the blocking foul. The BC whistled for the foul. Let's take another look. Oh, man. You can't draw it up any better than that. Yeah, and that's just really poor communication by Wake Forest. Again, you have to communicate. Uh, really not much to it. A little brush screen, and then Van Carroll comes off wide open for the dunk. Another heads up play by Moore. And, and back to your point, Jay. Look, he's impacted the game in other ways. Off the inbounds again. This time it's A.J. Griffin. And that's a career high for the freshman. 20 points at his first career start. Steve Forbes is hot, and I know he is not going to be pleased uh, with that defense. That's twice now. Out of bounds underneath. Wake Forest does not communicate, and they give up uncontested dumps. Wendell Moore Jr. swipes it away from Williams again. Transition three, Roach connects. Jeremy Roach with his first basket of the night. Dukes made their last four, and it's a 19-point lead. The Wednesday night in the ACC is trivia night. Can you name the two ACC opponents to go 4-0 at Cameron Indoor? Answer when we come back. This week announces the Silver Anniversary Award by the NCAA celebrating 25 years since his excellence with Wake Forest. The other is Tyler Hansborough. So Duncan and Hansborough, the only two ACC opposing players to go 4-0 in Cameron Indoor. One of the best, the big fundamental. We talk about a bucket. Uh, that guy, matchup nightmare. Second one I stumbled on. Duncan, okay, I got that, and then we were trying to figure that out, but yeah, Hansborough. Not too many people, obviously, those two are in rare company. Almost another highlight real worthy play from Rendell Moore Jr. trailing after the steal. He's now 15 turnovers for Wake Forest. One more thing about Tim Duncan. We looked up his record against Coach K, 8-1. and one. And, and I was just thinking there can't be many <laughs> that, that stole eight wins in college against Mike Krzyzewski. Well, I'd say Tim Duncan's record was pretty good against a lot of coaches. <laughs> yeah. Not just Coach K, but you know, back to the game right here, Jay. I think the thing that prior to the pause made Duke so scary, uh, they were leading one of the top assist teams. In college, and we've talked about all the talent they have around five or six guys that are going to be playing for a paycheck when they leave Duke. Uh, but it's how unselfish uh, they play. I think that's been key, and that's going to be continued key for their success. Well, when you talk about unselfishness, it starts with Wendell Moore Jr. leads the team in assists, one of the best in the ACC. Just under five assists per game. Uh, Duke, you know, they kind of false narrative with the one and done. So yes, they do have them. Paolo Bancaro will be one, but the player development that you've seen in a player like Wendell Moore Jr., got to give a lot of credit to Mike Krzyzewski, John Shire, and his coaching staff and how he has developed year in and year out. And now he's 
really been a consistent go-to guy for this Duke team. And the uh, other assistants, you know, Nolan Smith, get the chance to see him work uh, with that guard unit pre-game, uh, making reads. Uh, it's been a group effort, and I think Wendell Moore, for me, has been one of the most improved players, not just in ACC, but in college. Now, Trevor Keels has taken himself off the court, forced Duke in to a substitution here. And Trevor Keels just walking off under his own power, but really just taking himself out of the game. We'll try and get an update as soon as we can on Trevor Keels. And Duke in control, though, leading by 20. And it started on the defensive end. It's continued on the defensive end. Scoring drought of two minutes and 30 seconds before that bucket from Jake Moravia. After us, it's Louisville and NC State right here on the ACC Network. Tip off about 15 minutes away. As ACC in full swing and conference play. Back door open there, and LaRavia slams it home. Back to back buckets for the transfer from Indiana State. That's a beautiful set play right there, taking the book out of what Miami did. Uh, at Cameron Endor, getting some backdoor cuts. Duke again, aggressive in the passing lanes. Now that's a great cut by LaRavia. Bancaro oh, goes up with it, misfires. LaRavia the rebound. Bancaro. Slow to get up. It's a five on four with Bancaro trailing. You see us open. He buries it. That is what Wake Forest has been missing. A seven nothing run to bring some life back into the building. And John Shire uses the timeout. Only one remaining for Duke. But the Blue Devils control a 13 point lead with a little more than five minutes to play. Wake Forest on a run, 7 nothing, still down by 13. But they've needed a little bit more of this, Malcolm. Yeah, that's a beautiful setup by Williams, uh, the leader in assist uh, in the ACC. He is one of the top guys, and love how he operates uh, in the open floor. Beautiful find for his teammate. Here's Bank Carroll, 24 points for the freshman's name tonight. Inside Jeremy Roach wiggling his way free for two points in the paint. Well, that was a key theme. And right now, Duke has an advantage 38 to 28 reverse weight. Uh, they've done a nice job being patient offensively and then working the ball into the paint. Ravia through contact missed it. Gives it back to Duke. Now looking at the stat sheet, Lima Deke, it's such a good offensive team all season. Duke has limited them to just two made three-pointers tonight, two of 13, and 15 turnovers to go along with it. And they've capitalized on those turnovers. Duke, 22 points off of turnovers. Uh, Wake Forest only seven, so Duke's done a nice job taking care of the ball and then capitalizing off of three and turnovers. And one opportunity again, Wendell Moore Jr. You see the big smile from the junior. The Duke is dominating inside all night long. Great patience, unselfish play. 
and Lindell Moore Jr., although he has not had a huge offensive night, I think he's been key in this game defensively and then offensively getting guys in place. Big time and one finish right there. 44-0 points in the paint for Duke. They have just pounded it inside. It has worked. The defense has been dialed in all night. And what a bounce back performance this has been after the loss to Miami over the weekend. What has impressed you most tonight about Duke Malcolm? How they exploited matchups. Uh, they went to Bancaro and A.J. Griffin. They were patient. They were unselfish with the ball. And then defensively, uh, they came out with a mindset, and they made it really difficult uh, for Wake Forest to run their offense at times. It's all led to a 16-point lead, 326 away from Duke picking up a road win. Now, it's not all that surprising that a team scores more when they win than when they lose, but you look at the parallels between these two teams in this game, Malcolm has followed suit. Duke, just a better offensive outing, that kind of race to 80. They are well clear of Wake Forest down the stretch. And I think the key in this one right here, Wake Forest came into this game when we spoke with John Shire. Look, they are one of the better offensive teams and the ACC. And John Shire used the word mindset. We have to have that mindset to come in and be physical right off the tip. And you can see they came out aggressive on both ends. And what specifically defensively have they done to stifle win? You know, the one person they haven't stifled has been Alondis Williams, who is 25. Well, I think it's been the forcing of turnovers. Again, you look at the points off the of turnovers. Duke has 22 points off the of turnovers. They've been active in the passing lanes. And they've cashed in for 22 points off of those turnovers. Here's Ben Carroll. 24 points to his name. Contested shot goes begging. Williams is. Tried to do it all offensively. Extra pass to DC comes up empty. Two of 14 from three. That's certainly not the recipe to beat Duke either. Uh, but Jay, they've had some good looks. Again, that's not a bad look right there. Williams in the lane. And then he's able to break down the Duke defense. Extra pass, and that's a pretty good look for C. Just unable to convert. Griffin called for the foul, working against Moravia. Both teams in the bonus, one and one for Jake Moravia. Every Saturday right here on the ACC Network, nothing but net. The perfect recap for what is a loaded Saturday slate. It's a triple header on the ACC Network, leading right in to nothing but net. They'll recap the week that was, look ahead to the week to come. You don't want to miss it right here on the ACC Network. Now Wake Forest picks up. They're trying to create some turnovers where they extend their pressure. Duke breaks it with ease. They were susceptible to turnovers for season high. 17 in the loss to Miami, only seven tonight. Andre Griffin making his first career start. He continues to be terrific. 22 points, a career high for A.J. Griffin. Well, Jay, he's got the whole package. Great body control and strength. He can shoot threes with ease. And then when he gets around the rim, he can finish with the best. Hildreth calling for it in the corner. That rims out. Griffin hauls down the rebound. 
Wake Forest entered undefeated at home, 10 and 0. Uh, entered Duke into the equation. The Blue Devils hungry after losing to Miami, and there's the cherry on top from Mark Williams. An eighth slam dunk of the night, which ties a season high for Duke. Tough take, and it falls for Hadeem C. opens up the chant at the Joel. It was a terrific home crowd. It's the road fans being heard the loudest at the end of this one. And a dominant effort from start to finish. Duke opened up on a 12-4 run. Wake battled back, but just Blue Devils too much tonight, Malcolm. Yeah, and all set up right here. Unselfish play. Wendell Moore Jr., nice alley-oop lob to Williams. Uh, but for me, A.J. Griffin closing out that first half, and then him and Bankiero, uh, they went to those guys in isolations, and really, Wake had no answer uh, for those two. Williams with 25 of Wake 62. Arabia after a goose egg in the first half, puts up 14 in the second half, but... Not nearly enough, a dominant Duke effort and a terrific bounce back win after the loss to Miami. Without Coach K on the sidelines, John Shire and the eighth ranked Blue Devils come in and lead with a 12 point victory. Okay, my takeaway from this game right here. You know Duke has the talent offensively. Bancaro, A.J. Griffin, they had the whole game going tonight. Uh, but defensively, uh, Duke, their team, uh, when they're locked in defensively, they can create a lot of offense. Tonight, 22 points off of turnovers. And I think that was a big story in this game tonight. Duke's defense showed up start to finish. A.J. Griffin in his first career start, 22 points, paid dividends immediately, and fellow freshman Paolo Bancaro, four shy of the season high himself, 24 points, and there wasn't anything Wake could do to stop those two guys tonight, Malcolm. Yeah, again, credit Duke. Uh, they just exploited the matchup. They didn't try to... Uh, make it difficult for themselves. Uh, they looked and identified the matchups that they wanted to go to, and they kept going to it. Van Carroll, 24 points tonight. A.J. Griffin, to me, though, gets his first start. He was the guy that came out, and I think he was the X factor in this game. Efficient, 8 from 11 from the floor, 3 of 5 from the three-point line, 22 points. Impressive performance. Comes in to the Joel. The Wits of Salem leads with a win. Now 13 and 2 on the season. ACC Network doubleheader continues. Louisville and NC State is next for Malcolm Huckabee, Jay Alter, our crew. Duke wins it over Wake Forest. Let's get to the Louisville at NC State.